Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all the latest news from the world of archaeology. Back in December 2020, I released a video called Solving the Mystery of the Great Pyramid of Egypt, where I put forward my hypothesis that the grand size of the Great Pyramid was actually a change in plan. That originally the pyramid was smaller, but Khufu and his architects decided to enlarge it. It was an idea that came about after looking at the Queen's Chamber air channels. For me, there was no logical explanation that explained why these narrow shafts stopped abruptly within the core masonry of the pyramid. They had no entrance and no exit, but clearly a lot of careful and painstaking work went into their construction. If you had gone to so much trouble to create these narrow bendy passages, crossing multiple courses of the pyramid core masonry, and for more than 200 feet, why would you close them off? History for Granite has pretty much proved to me and many of his viewers that the channels that emanate from the King's Chamber were for airflow, as I showed in my last video on the subject linked below. Until any conflicting evidence is presented by someone else, to me it kind of feels like case closed. And the need for air inside the pyramid can only mean that people would be going into the structure after it was complete, that there were mourners, people paying their respects to the king after his death. When the pyramid was eventually closed up forever, maybe Khufu's body remained inside, or maybe it was moved to an unknown burial place. Nobody knows for sure. But I think that for some amount of time, it does make sense the Great Pyramid acted like a mausoleum, and that's why air channels were made for the King's Chamber. I believe people from all over Egypt, and maybe even abroad, would enter the pyramid to see the deceased king, just as people do today with the preserved body of Ho Chi Minh in his mausoleum in Vietnam. History for Granite has also pretty much proved beyond doubt that the Queen's Chamber was unfinished. It was an unused chamber within the Great Pyramid, with unfinished stone walls, no evidence of stone slabs ever being laid on the floor, and the northern and southern channels didn't even open up into the room. It's possible the Queen's Chamber was nothing more than a contingency, in case the bold plan for a granite-lined, flat-roofed King's Chamber high up within the pyramid failed. It was a bold plan, never attempted before, and if there were signs the chamber was not structurally sound, well, the Queen's Chamber was there. Alternatively, maybe the Queen's Chamber was planned for another use altogether. Whatever its function, whether a backup for the King's Chamber or something else, why were the Queen's Chamber air channels unfinished? Why do they stop within the pyramid masonry? and not that far from the pyramid's edge. Why not just, well, finish them? What if late on in the pyramid project, things started to go wrong in the King's Chamber? The Queen's Chamber could no longer be used as a place for mourners, because there was no way to bring air into the heart of the pyramid. Back in 2020, I thought a logical explanation for the Queen's Chamber air channels stopping within the Great Pyramid masonry was because the pyramid was originally smaller. And then there was a change of plan. The decision was made to expand the pyramid. The original pyramid was pretty much complete, the King's Chamber did not fail, and so they just added more masonry, expanding the pyramid, extending the King's Chamber air channels, and then they completed the job. But for five years, something always bothered me about my own explanation. Because expanding the pyramid by this much, adding all this extra bulk, could potentially have led to problems with the King's Chamber. It would be another unknown, a risky phase in the Great Pyramid's construction. So any competent architect would have surely extended the Queen's Chamber air channels as well just as they did the kings, all the way to the edge of the pyramid in case problems surfaced. But they didn't. 
I found this to be a major problem because it defied logic. The fact is, work on the Queen's Chamber air channels came to an end within the masonry of the Great Pyramid. But why? How can we explain this logically? Well, I had an idea a few months ago, but I have to say it's thanks to the magnificent work of Lawrence Van Vliet that has somewhat confirmed it in my head, at least for now. Pyramid research and understanding constantly evolves. I think we have to scrap the idea the pyramid was enlarged, and that's because of all the reasons just mentioned. But that's not to say my previous video has not been useful. It's an example of progress. Building on an idea. Lawrence and I have both used the observations noted in my video, as well as from the work of Keith Hamilton and of course History for Granite, and we've both come to a more logical explanation for the abrupt end of the Queen's Chamber air channels. And it's all to do with how the pyramid was likely built, having a stepped inner core structure, something we really have to consider when we try to understand the intricacies of the Great Pyramid. We know from studying the exposed core of the Maidun Pyramid, and also the large gash on the Menkore Pyramid, as well as the structure of the Giza Queen's Pyramids, that, at least in the 4th dynasty, pyramid cores were stepped. You could say like an internal tower structure. The stepped core structure of the pyramid is basically the pyramid. The main bulk. The true solid and stable structure hiding inside. If this was successful, the pyramid was basically a success. And when this was done, the hard work was done. When the core was complete, you know if it was structurally sound. Afterwards, the steps would be filled with backing stones, and this would give it a true pyramid shape, before casing stones were added over the top. By all accounts, the steps of the pyramid cores were not always regular, and the individual stones that make up the cores were also not regular, having all shapes and sizes, and slops of mortar crudely added. The Great Pyramid and all the pyramids of Egypt are far from perfect structures inside, but I'm guessing the outer layer of backing stones had to be neat to allow the easier fitting of the casing stones. The finished look of the structure had to be perfect. So, the important point to remember is that when we look at the Great Pyramid today, we are looking at the backing stones, not the casing and not the core. If we strip these backing stones away, we would be left with a stepped core structure, and of course we don't know exactly what this looks like, and that's because we can't see it. But in 1986 to 1987, Nearly a thousand microgravimetrical measurements were taken on the Great Pyramid by the EDF Foundation. Apparently, this image comes from the data, although I can't seem to find an original source that shows the specific image in its true context, or how it was created. Jean Pierre Houdin interpreted the diagram as showing an internal spiral ramp, which is his theory for how the pyramid was built. But for me, it doesn't really look like a spiral, and I think you need an element of artistic license to see it this way. I think it's more likely we're actually looking at a rough outline of the pyramid's stepped core, which would likely have a different density to the backing stones, and that's because of how it was made. But if this somewhat crude interpretation of the results is correct, it's very hard to extrapolate this data into a 2D side view. Anyway, there must be a stepped core inside the Great Pyramid, and after recently reading this fantastic paper by Lawrence Van Vliet, available for free download on academia.edu, things all began to click into place. He talks of the stepped core, but also how he believes the edge of this stepped core is where the Queen's Chamber air channels terminate, and everything now starts to make sense. As Lawrence himself admits, he's no engineer or architect, but I asked him to send me a very rough diagram of the pyramid's core, just because I wanted to visualise his words in the paper, seeing the Queen's Chamber air channels ending on the edge of the stepped core. 
And this is my rough attempt without using any data. Just showing an example of how a stepped core structure might look inside a true pyramid. With the Queen's Chamber air channels reaching the stepped core edge. The whole idea just makes so much sense. And I do think it's greatly significant because everything just falls into place. And a long standing mystery of the Great Pyramid is a mystery no more. Completing the stepped core of the Great Pyramid was the end of the first and most important phase of the Pyramid project. When the core was complete, every internal component of the Great Pyramid was complete. There was a grand gallery, a queen's chamber, a granite lined king's chamber, relieving chambers and four narrow air channels, and all four of them reached the edge of the pyramid. This was the brainchild of the architect Hemiunu. He had built an enormous, successful and stable structure. The king's chamber did not fail, and the bulk of the project was now done. Now the pyramid just needed to be finished, to become a true pyramid, aesthetically pleasing and the ancient wonder we all know today. But with the success of the enormous core structure, and, relatively speaking, with only a small amount of backing and casing stones to be added, yes relative to what had been achieved already, decisions had to be made. Whether the Queen's Chamber was a contingency King's Chamber or not, the decision was clearly made that this chamber was to be abandoned. They were not going to finish it. So floor slabs were not added, the walls did not receive their finish, and the air channels were not opened up in the northern and southern walls. And because the chamber was abandoned, it was decided that the ends of the channels were just to be covered up with backing stones. There was no point doing the intricate work to extend the channels if the room was never going to be used. To finish the pyramid now, all they had to do was add the backing stones, extend the king's chamber air channels and then add the casing. The famous Gantenbrink removable doors that were used in construction, protecting the queen's chamber channels from sand and the elements, were just left in place and backing stones were added to the step core. Understanding the core of the pyramid is the key to it all. Instead of the idea the pyramid once grew in size, as explained by Lawrence Van Vliet in his paper, it seems as though there was actually a plan to shrink the pyramid if the king's chamber did indeed fail. As noted by Rudolf Gantenbrink, Fine Chora casing stone is used for the end sections of the Queen's Chamber air channels, and this is a finishing stone, showing that from the beginning, this was as far as the Queen's Chamber air channels were ever going to go. Not only was this the edge of the step core, but due to the type of stone, it means it was also going to be the edge of the Great Pyramid if the King's Chamber did indeed fail. So, because of the change in stone, from standard limestone to Chora limestone near the end of the air channels, I think it's a fair interpretation that this is the shape and size of the contingency pyramid. If the King's Chamber failed and the plan had to change, part of the core structure would be removed, backing stones would be added where needed, and then the casing over the top. This video has kind of been a bit like a brain dump, but I hope you followed so far, and I hope everything is clear and makes sense. To summarise, Lawrence Van Vliet and I believe the Queen's Chamber air channels end on the internal stepped core structure of the pyramid, because when the core was completed, only then did we know if the pyramid was a success, and only then could the decision be made as to how the pyramid was finished, and it all depended on the success of the King's Chamber. If the chamber succeeded, the Queen's Chamber channels are blocked off and the Great Pyramid is finished to its full size, just as we see it today. But if the King's Chamber failed, the pyramid would fall back to plan B. The Queen's Chamber could be used for the King's remains, the air channels reached the pyramid's edge and the structure could still be finished in good time. 
I'm well aware that this isn't a detailed explanation for a developing idea, but it's an addendum to my video from 5 years ago to explain how things have evolved in my mind. It's my current thinking, and what I believe is a logical and realistic explanation for the Queen's Chamber Air Channel mystery. Shortly I'll build on this video and offer an explanation for the North Face Corridor and also the Big Void, and this will all be included in a forthcoming video. Apparently, Sahi Hawass wants to look behind the door at the end of the Queen's Chamber Northern Air Channel, adamant there is something to find. But just like the Southern Channel, I'm very confident there will be absolutely nothing of any significance. That doesn't mean I don't think we should take a look, but I think all it will show is another small space and the beginning of the Pyramid Backing Stones, but of course I hope I'm proved wrong. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the ideas presented in this video, so please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.